unbelievable. <laughs> so of course we're at the museum, the terracotta soldiers. It's unbelievable. It actually far exceeds my hopes and expectations. In the last episode of the China series, my parents and I experienced the beautiful cities of Suzhou and Hangzhou. We explored a Buddhist temple, had a boat tour on the West Lake, and saw the most beautiful sunset I have ever seen. In this episode, we fly to Xi'an, where we spend two days exploring this incredible and historic city. Our first stop in Xi'an was the world-famous Terracotta Army Museum. We are about to go see the Terracotta Soldiers right now, which I'm very excited about. I did a research paper on this when I was in ninth grade, but now several years later, we're finally here. So come with us and we're going to show you around and I'll give you some more facts when we get it. is home to the Terracotta Army, which was completed in 206 BC. This clay army was built next to the tomb of China's first emperor, Qin Shi Huang, and was meant to follow him into the afterlife so that he may have the same military power and prestige wherever he ended up. Finally, you got your picture. I almost ripped my pants. <laughs> Someone was like budging in, and my pants like stretched out like this. <laughs> I got <laughs> Are you okay? I'm okay. Yeah, no, I was just so proud of that little girl next to me. Oh my god, it was scary. <laughs> These crowds are unbelievable. I'm just at a panic attack. Poor thing. There's a little girl that got smushed. My pants almost got ripped. She was just determined to keep it. But it's pretty cool. Yeah. That's what I'm about a wobbly. Okay. Yep. I feel like I'm in awe of the crowd just as much as the terracotta horror here. <laughs> just look at all the people. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> I could tell you lots of stuff, but my mom's more excited than me because she's an archaeologist, so I figured I'd let her do a little bit of the talking while we're actually in the room here, so. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, of course, we're at the museum, the Terracotta Soldiers. It's unbelievable. It actually far exceeds my hopes and expectations. It's really impressive, other than just the scale of this, which is incredible. It's like a 50 kilometer, 50 mile area of just archaeology remains from the different dynasties, wow. but the way they've laid out this Pit Wan room, they've got uh, reconstructed soldiers, which is more the classic images that you see on museum posters, and they've got some excavations that are going on here, and they show uh, how it would have looked when the archaeologists first discovered the site, and then back here, they've got the workshop where they're actually showing how they reconstruct the soldiers. So, it's an archaeologist's dream come true. <laughs> Miha! Yeah! Do you wanna do you wanna hold this for a second? Okay. Here's the same green What you see here is just the first pit, which is full of thousands of terracotta soldiers. It's absolutely amazing the level of detail. And actually um, behind me you can see like the, the pigtails and the different um, features on faces and so forth. It's really unbelievably amazing. It's far exceeding expectations. Okay, so we're finally out of the crowds and we're walking from pit number one, archaeology pit number one, to archaeology pit number two. So the first pit was huge um, and it was discovered apparently in 1974. Mm -hmm. 1974 by four farmers. And they found little pieces, little shirts. Shirts. They found little shirts um, where they thought they were bad luck. So they basically destroyed them and threw them away and didn't tell anyone about it. And then all of a sudden, because there was a drought, there was a head that was sticking out um, from the ground. And so they were like, "Okay, this is kind of freaked out. This is this is probably a big deal. We should tell the government." So they told the government about it, and they got archaeologists to come in. And now what you see is. 
it's oh, a World, a heritage, world site. heritage site. Absolutely. And incredible. Yeah, it's unbelievable. And it's only a fraction of what's actually out there archaeologically. Yeah, I know. I can't. Yeah. The actual tomb of the emperor is like a mile and a half from here. Is it? Oh, yeah, that's yeah, right. Yeah, that with the hill we saw. We drove past it, yeah. so. And the hill's like 120 feet high. And they've just never gone into it because it's very Indiana Jones ish. They actually know that the, <laughs> there's. Um, weapons set at the entrance oh really yeah i missed that the, part yeah so it's like you would not want to be the first archaeologist walking through the entrance <laughs> no you wouldn't <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> okay on to pit number two so bad news unfortunately one of my camera cards got damaged and i ended up losing the rest of the video footage from the terracotta soldiers needless to say i'm pretty sad because the rest of the museum was just as amazing as pit number one on top of that i also lost my footage from the xian wall which is one of the most visited sites in xian and is another must see ugh but all i can say about the terracotta army museum is that it is incredibly worth seeing as well as the xian wall and you should go there if you have the chance Okay, so on day two in Xi'an, we spent the early part of the day wandering the streets of the Muslim district of the city, which is filled with amazing looking and smelling food. So we are currently in the Muslim quarter right now in Xi'an and I am loving every moment. The richness of colors and all of the food here is just overstimulating in the best way possible. We zigzag throughout the streets in order to get to the Great Mosque of Xi'an. During the peak of the Silk Road, Xi'an was a major trade hub of the old Imperial Highway before traders headed off farther east to either Beijing or Shanghai. This meant that Xi'an had many traders from the Islamic Empire of the Middle East coming through the city. The Middle Eastern traders not only brought their goods with them, but also their religion, Islam. Many people in Xi'an and across China still practice Islam to this day. Construction of the Great Mosque began in 740 AD and was slowly added to up until the Qin Dynasty in 1911. What we symbolize here was a very important place in all places. Okay. And after the capital moved from Xi'an to other places, when the emperor came to Xi'an, they always did visit to the mosque. The complex features a beautiful mix of Islamic art and Chinese architecture, which is a great representation of two cultures blending together as a result of trade. Whether you are a history nerd, a theologist, or just love seeing some amazing sights, then Xi'an should definitely be added to your travel list. On the next and last episode of the China series, I show you some of my last days in China and give some final thoughts on my amazing experience there. It's my last day, my last full day here in, in Huchuan. Tune in next week to see it all.